Good morning. So funny, my wife told me, she said, make sure your mic's on when you go up, and here I come up and I forget. I don't know. We're so glad you're with us here at Mountain Springs Baptist Church this morning, and happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. We're so thankful you're here today, and we, we have a video we want to start off the service with, so we'll let that video play, and then I'll open us in a word of prayer. <laughs> I love Annette. She is she <laughs> Um The Lord loves for his people to laugh, doesn't he? Um I I I have had several of you comment on my trampoline adventure. Uh we went up to Liberty University this weekend to uh, be with Benny, my son-in-law, who graduated uh, from college up there, and Dan and I, neither one can fill our legs this morning from walking and um, jumping on a trampoline, and it's just crazy, but we had a, a great weekend. I do want to share something else, totally um, has nothing to do with Mother's Day today. Pam's Sunday school class, um, or Tony's Sunday school class, they held a get-together a couple of weeks ago, and Pam came up with this idea of having the couples paint each other. They sat across from each other, and they all painted a picture of each other. Uh, my daughter posted that on social media, and you'll never believe how many people have watched that video. As of this morning, seven million people have watched that video. Um, and it does say Mountain Springs Baptist Church on there. I, I think the, the hero of the whole video is Robert standing in the back back there. Uh, he, he's not standing in the corner back there. He's, uh, he's having some pain in his back, so it's better for him to stand up. But uh, 7 million people have heard of Mountain Springs this past uh, week because of, of Pam and and Andrea and uh, getting all that together and then uh, Carson posting it. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Are we ready? Let's watch the video. <clears throat> to the mothers and all the women who've cared for us, to the grandmothers, the spiritual mothers, and the waiting mothers, to the foster moms, the single moms, and the stepmoms, to the mentors, friends, guardians, and guides, to those who loved us, taught us, and showed us the way, to those who carried us, held our hand, and watched us grow, to those who experienced blessing this year, and to those who went through loss, to the heroic women all around us, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your courage, your kindness, and your faith in God. Thank you for shaping us, nurturing us, and walking with us through life. Thank you for showing us what it looks like to love and follow Jesus. Thank you for your prayers, your wisdom, and for never giving up on us. Thank you for boldly stepping into this high and holy calling. Thank you for the long nights and the short years and for the incredible joy whether this is a day of reflection, rejoicing, or remembering, we acknowledge you, we honor you, and we thank you today. Happy Mother's Day. We want to start off our service today in prayer, and then we're going to recognize our moms. So would you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father, Lord, we thank you for a mother. Lord, what a precious gift a mother is to a child. 
And Lord, I pray that today as we honor these moms, Lord, that above all we, we honor you as the creator who created the very first mom. And Lord, put in that mother some things that a man just cannot accomplish. But Father, we praise you for uh, your creation and for the gift of a mother. We pray your blessings upon our service today. Father, may you above all be high and lifted up. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we have some gifts we want to give uh, to all the mothers this morning. But before we hand all those out, um, we want to recognize some mothers that we think are special. And the best way to do that is to have them either stand up or raise their hand. But I need to know who possibly, and this is for anybody here. If you're a visitor and you qualify for this, then you can stand up. So I'm looking for the youngest mother in the church right now. Um, so do we have any mothers that are under 20 years old? <laughs> Skeet. <laughs> um, how about 25 and under? Any mothers 25 and under? We got two. You can stand up. You're a visitor. All right. So what's the age here? 25? 25. Birth month. And you're... So what? So Allie is our winner today. Allie, you come on up, sweetheart. Now I'm looking... Now I'm looking for the mother with the most children. Anybody have six children or more? <laughs> wow, amen. Is that the only one? Come on up. <laughs> She's like, I can't believe you're making me do this. <laughs> now here's the one I get in trouble for oldest mother in the church have I got anybody over 90 years old that's a mom Judy Mama Judy's 93 come on up well you don't have to come up <laughs> um, you okay Rick's gonna get his mom up here 93 do I have another mother that's above 90 Skeet, 90 and a half, that counts. Come on up, Skeet. Well, they're not raising their hand. So we have gifts for all these moms. Thank I'm you. Well, they're the same thing, just different size boxes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's applaud these moms one more time. <laughs> Y'all can go have a seat. Okay, Now, for every other mother in the church today, we have a gift for you, and we're going to ask that if you have a, a child here, uh, that they come up and get it for you and bring it to you. And so y'all come on and, and get those gifts for your moms. And if, um, and if you're a mother and you don't have a child with you, love then uh, I love you too, Mom. You're welcome. We should have plenty, so. And praise team, if you'll go ahead and be making your way on up.
All right. Not yet. Not yet. All right. Every mother got a gift. We have several left. Okay, if your mother could not be with you here today and you want to take her something from the church, come, come get that. Good deal. Anyone? All right, praise team's going to do the goodness of God this morning. So y'all listen to this song.
number 183, Only Trust Him. We'll sing the first, second, and last verse.
the ushers will go ahead and come forward. We'll um, we'll have a offering offering prayer, and I just want to tell you, church, it's it is wonderful to stand up here and see the fellowship and the unity we have in this church. And I just want to praise God for that this morning. I'm. It's good when you have to kind of stop the, the greeting service because everybody's having such a good time and reaching out. And I thank you, church, for doing just that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, as we come before you, Lord, we're just as humble as we can be, and we praise you for Mountain Springs Baptist Church and what you're doing here, Lord, and I see the unity and the spirit. And I thank you, God, for the way that you just laid your hand on this church over the years, Lord. Lord, we do praise you this morning for all the mothers that are here, Lord. I know some may be going, some people may be going through some tough times because of the loss of mother or whatever the case may be, Lord, but we lift them up to you too, Lord. And Lord, again, we praise you for Mountain Springs Baptist Church, and we just ask you to keep your hand upon us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We have um, four couples this morning that um, expressed interest in dedicating their children to the Lord. That is a scriptural thing, folks. Um, the Bible says in Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16, and they were bringing children to him that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. I was talking about people wanting to bring their children to the Lord. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. He took them in his arms, and he blessed them, laying his hands upon them. So I want to invite this morning to join me on stage, Allie and David, with their little boy Cain. And then Luke and Candy with their little boy Sawyer. Jared, I'm sorry. Oh, Cain's not with y'all today. Okay, I don't, that's right, that's graduation. Okay, well I have a Bible for him. So, Jared and Kate with Marion and Atlas, or Momo, as uh, he's known by. Then Amanda and Seth with Uriah. (laughs) 
these are precious children and um, I, I love them um, I've, I've already started to build a relationship with some of them I, um, he was seeking me out the other night and found me and this morning he came up and we played the piano a little bit together so <laughs> but um, you know it's a biblical thing for parents and for children to be dedicated to the Lord it's a challenge for a parent to raise their child in a home, raising them up, setting an example of Jesus Christ in the home. And sometimes that's challenging because all of us who are parents in this room, you know how there's times in your life where the just life itself brings stress upon you and, and maybe at home you're displaying anger or frustration at just circumstances in life. But our children are watching us, aren't they? And the greatest influence that a child has on their life is that mom and that dad. So it's an important role for both the parents and then grandparents and on down the line uncles and aunts to all live their lives before that child loving Jesus but there's also a responsibility for us as a church because we as a church have to display that as well my desire is that all these children grow up in this church and that their experience at Mountain Springs Baptist Church is one of love that they don't see any division in the church. They don't see adults acting like children. But they see people that love the Lord and love them. By doing that, they'll remain at this church most likely. And because of that, they'll have a wife someday. And they'll have children. And it just continues on. So parents, today I'm asking you before this congregation of people, before the Lord, do you promise to raise your child knowing the Lord in your home, in your actions, that you teach them the Bible, that you bring them to church and let this church love on them, and let us be a part of raising them up to know Jesus. So one day we have the opportunity ourselves to watch as they give their life to Jesus. Do you make that promise today? We do. Amen. And church, I'm going to challenge you to do, this, to do the same, to make that same promise. Do we as a church promise before the Lord and these parents that we're going to live our lives before these children in such a way that is pleasing to God. That we're going to walk before them as an example of what a godly people should look like. Surrendered to Jesus and giving our lives daily to Him. And if any of you have the opportunity of teaching them as the years go on, whether it's right now in preschool or children's church, all the way up until they're adults, to pour into them and demonstrate love to them. If you as a church make that promise, will you say, I do? I will praise the Lord. Well, let's congratulate these parents. We have Bibles for each of the children and certificates of dedication. I've already signed those things and wrote a little personal note in each Bible for the children. And this is a gift from Mountain Springs Baptist Church to you. Let's give them one more hand of applause. God bless you all. Thank you. Yes. Amen.
right. You know, if I can add to that, um, last Sunday my wife had taught the children little salvation bracelets and what each color bead stands for. And Seth and Amanda's little boy, Uriah, uh, they videotaped him sharing the gospel through those little videos and... Um, or through what Deanna taught them last week. And I tell you, praise the Lord for that. So we are having an impact on them. And let's keep doing that. Well, if you have your Bibles with me, I want to invite you to turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. If you have a child that uh, would be going to children's church, then you can make your way over there to that good-looking guy. And he'll take your children down to children's church. Four, age four through fifth grade. Anyone else? Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3 is where we're going to be today. But I'm going to share a lot of other scripture with you. And we're talking about honoring mom today. And the question is this, mothers, moms, are you an honorable woman? In Proverbs chapter 31, verses 28 through 31, actually if you read verses 10 and following, I don't have time to read all that today, but what we find in that scripture of Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31, we find what's known as a virtuous woman. This is the perfect model of what a woman should be like. But if you go to verse 28, it says, Her children rise up and they call her blessed. Her husband also. And he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. So give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Throughout the Bible, I will get to Ephesians in just a moment, but throughout the Bible we have a lot of women that displayed what it means to be a woman of God. Sarah, she was the mother who waited. Hagar, the mother who endured. Rebecca, the mother who believed. Leah and Rachel, mothers who had to share. Jehoabed, the mother with a plan. Samson's mother was a mother who followed the rules. Naomi was the mother-in-law who shared her faith. Hannah, the mother who kept her promise. Elizabeth, the mother who believed in miracles. Mary, the mother who is blessed among women. Of course, that's the mother of Jesus. So moms, are you an honorable woman? Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that honoring mom comes with a promise. That's what I want to do today. I want to show you some things about what the Bible says about mothers. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, through 3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Look at the last line. That it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. If you want to have a long life and live here on this earth, that's a promise to you that you can do that if you honor your mother and your father. But sadly, that doesn't always happen. I'm thankful today that so many sons and daughters have come to spend Mother's Day with their mom right here at Mountain Springs. They've decided to leave the church they're a part of and come here today for this day to be with their mom. That's amazing. And I hope that all of you in this room that still have a mother living, that today, some way, you'll go to that mom and you'll demonstrate love to her and just show her. And it's not just for today. It should be every day that you demonstrate love to your mom. A mother has the greatest impact on you as a child, or probably did. And so we need to honor them and show them that love. So 
that's the, the first thing I want you to learn is that if you want a long life, and that shouldn't be your motive. It's a gift of doing so. Honor your mom and your dad. Let them know that you love them. Spend time with them. Make opportunities to do stuff with them. It's so important because I promise you, there's come, going to come a day when they're going to pass from this earth and go be with the Lord. And you're going to miss them. It's going to be a sad day. But it's so much easier when you have in your life demonstrated love to them to let them go be with the Lord and you have no regrets. Psalm 139. I thought this was amazing. Do you know that God picked your mother for you? Psalm 139, verses 13 through 18 says, For you were formed, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10, we have Jeremiah talking about the same thing. He said, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Boy, that's something to be excited about. The Lord knew you before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. He knew you. He knew your days. The Lord does know everything about you. He is the one that created you. He is the one that picked out the woman who you were to be created in. And He made you and, and laid out your days for you. Now, here's something that people really struggle with, and it's this word predestination. That we have been predestined to some things in our life. Well, in honesty, that's true. God knew you, and He laid out this beautiful plan for everyone's life. But God also gave us this thing called a free will. And with that free will came some choices that took us off of our path sometimes. The Lord laid out our days for us, and they would be beautiful if we'd stay on the path. But we let sin and the world get us off of that path. We chase after things that are not of God. And because of that, we stray. And that's where sin comes in we'd stay on the path we probably could be sinless but because we can't because we exercise this thing called a free will we struggle in life and we we stray off that path and God the Father who's able to see all of history because God is all knowing he looked down through history and he saw whether you were going to choose his son Jesus or not he knows that. And so because of that, you've been predestined. You've been ordained because He knew that you were going to choose Him or not. So if you've ever struggled with predestination, please understand you're not predestined to go to heaven or to go to hell. You're predestined for the life that God gave you, which was perfect. But God, being all-knowing, was able to see whether you would choose Him or not.
And there's your destination. So in this, this thing here, understanding that God chose you to be in this, this mother that you had, also understand that there's mothers that have children, and God chose you as the, the mother of that child, but that mother still has this thing called a free will. And that mother still is attacked by the things of Satan. And because of that, sometimes moms are not as honorable as they should be. I know mothers who are drunks, who struggle with drugs, who struggle with all kinds of things in life. Satan has really taken a hold of their life, but yet they're a mom. And they have children that are growing up in that atmosphere. And, and I've heard some people say, God punished me by giving me that mother. And that's not true. Because you have a free will too. If you're in this room and you have a mother that you look at and you think she's not honorable. My mom is a mom that chooses the world over the Lord. How am I supposed to love and respect her? You do it through Jesus. You let God help you with that. To demonstrate love because you may be the only Jesus that they see. So if you live your life honorable and giving your life to Jesus, <coughs> it may be that the Lord will use you to bring them to Himself. So understand that path that God has put you on and He's pre predestined some things in your life, but you still have this thing called a free will. So God has picked you for the mother that you have, and we should respect that. Also understand the fourth thing today. Do you know that your mother makes sacrifices for you? I'm thinking about that story that we read in Kings chapter 3, verses 26 through 27, where these two harlots both had babies. And they fell asleep at night, and one of the mothers rolled over on her child and killed that child. That mother woke up and realized what she had done. So she took her dead baby, and she went to this other mother whose baby was laying there with her asleep and the mom was asleep and she put her dead baby in that baby's place and she took the living baby back and, and went back to sleep the next morning they both woke up and the mother of the living baby realized that the baby that was with her was not her child moms you know your children don't you you know them and she realized this is not my baby And so an argument broke out between the two of them, and the king was summoned, and he came to them. And, and there before Solomon, they were saying, This is my child. The other one was saying, No, this is not my child. And what ended up happening there is that Solomon made this declaration. He said, Let's take the baby and cut it in half and give each mother a piece. In doing that, this statement was made by the mother's, the baby of the mother. She said, please don't kill my son. The baby's mother screamed. Your majesty, majesty, I love him very much. Give him to her. Just don't kill him. The other woman shouted, go ahead and cut him in half. Then neither of us will have the baby. Solomon said, don't kill the baby. Then he pointed to the first woman. She is his real mother. Give the baby to her. That mother was willing to sacrifice raising the child so he could live. Sounds like God, doesn't it? He sacrificed his son Jesus so that we might live. 
And she was willing to do that. And in, in so doing, to try to accomplish that, the baby lived. But God stepped in. And Solomon said, you know, give her to the woman that's willing to sacrifice. Church, your mom's made sacrifices for you. Maybe things you don't even realize that she's done for you. Spending time on her knees praying for you. Intercessory prayer to help you with whatever you're going through in life. She has probably spent money that she didn't have really to make sure you had what you needed. To give. That's what a mom does. Just gives and gives and gives. And her motivation is love. That unconditional, agape type of love. The same love that Jesus has for us. He loves us no matter what we do. Whatever sins we've, we've done, He still loves us. He still went to the cross of Calvary for us and died so that we could have eternal life. So as your mother has made sacrifices for you, and some of you know what those sacrifices are, money that she spent on you, time she spent on you, where maybe she could go out and spend time doing something she wanted to do or spend money for on herself. She didn't do that. She spent it on you. The love, the restless nights, the sleepless nights. That's what a mom does. And how we should honor them. And realize that sacrifice. But here's the troubling fact. As I was preparing this week, and there were so many different scriptures I was looking at, trying to figure out where to go with the message for today. I came across a passage of scripture that just, I thought, that's it. I couldn't get away from it. And it's Proverbs chapter 30, verses 11 through 14. And it's a passage of Scripture that is a troubling thing. Here's what it says. I'm going to read through verse 17. There is a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. There's a generation that is pure in its own eyes, yet is not washed from its filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and are their eyelids, and their eyelids are lifted up. There's a generation whose teeth are like swords, whose fangs are like knives, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among them. The leech has two daughters. Give and give. There are things that are never satisfied. Four never say enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not satisfied with water, and the fire never says enough. The eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother. The ravens of the valley will pick it out, and the young eagles will eat it. It is such a sad thing that in the world we live in today, that's what we see. We see young people that maybe they've been raised in a Christian home, but Satan's got a hold of that young person. And that young person is just so angry. Mom's trying to love on them, trying to give them whatever they need. But there's no respect. No love. They talk to their mother like their mom should be a servant to them. They don't do anything to honor mother. She may cook for them. They come home and eat and just leave the dishes laying everywhere. 
She washes their clothes, hangs them up for them in the closet, and that child just takes them off and just drops them wherever it is in the house. Dirty clothes laying everywhere. There's young people in the world, and even some adults, that just don't show respect to mom and dad. Lord, help us. There's opportunities for you and I, when we know of a situation like that, to step in. I have stepped in. Recently, there was an occasion where I stepped in and I talked to this young lady's mother. And Lord, help me. I almost crossed that line of being sinful because she was yelling at me and to get my point across to her, my voice was elevated to the point where I had to walk outside. I was walking up and down the driveway having a come-to-Jesus conversation with this mother. This was a, a young lady that wanted to honor her mother, but mom didn't show any respect. But then I've seen the other side of that too, where it's a child that has a great godly mother that has just loved those children, and maybe she's just given and given and given, and maybe she wasn't as strict on them as other mothers. I think some, of, some moms struggle with that. Oh, I just love them too much. I can't spank them. I believe it's biblical. <laughs> um, but some moms just don't, I just can't do it. I just love them. I just can't spank them. What's the Bible say? Spare the rod, spoil the child. Some of you probably know a spoiled child that's grown up now. And even as an adult, they're struggling because they're still doing just exactly what Proverbs says there. They've got their hands out all the time. Gimme, 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 gimme. They're takers. They're not givers. Folks, a lot of that's going on in the world today. You can see them. It goes all over me when I see a young person talk ugly to their mom disrespectful to their mom so often I, I just want to step in and knock their head off <laughs> bring them to Jesus <laughs> I'm just being real with you what the Lord desires for us to do though is to speak some love and some truth into them and sometimes you do have to get stern. You dads in this room, if you witness your children being dis disrespectful to your wife, step in. There's times where I, I should have done that a better job at that. And I apologize to my wife for not doing that. When I should have stepped in. But dads, we need to do that. Step in there and, and demonstrate love to your wife by making sure she gets the respect she should get. Is she perfect? No, she's a human being. She is a sinful person just like everyone else in this room. And she's going to make mistakes too. But if God has forgiven her, then we should too. And step in there and love and respect and give honor to your mother. So important. We serve a mighty God. And if you have your mother and she's still living, love on her today. And tomorrow and the day after that. Would you bow your heads with me? I want to invite you this morning just to just pray to the Lord and say, Father, thank you for my mom. 
help me do a better job of showing her how much I love her. It doesn't cost anything to show some love and respect. To verbalize those words to mom. Mom, I love you. Do you just pray and say, Father, help me to do that? If you know that you've done wrong against your mother, would you just pray and say, Father, help me to own up to my faults and failures and go to mom and just say, Mom, forgive me. I want to be a better son. I want to be a better daughter. I'm going to love on you. And if you do have a difficult mom, maybe that strayed from the faith, never known Jesus, she's in the world, would you just pray and say, Father, save my mom. And let me be a witness before her. Whatever God's leading you to pray this morning, do that. There may be someone here this morning that doesn't know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, and God's spoken to you this morning that you need to give your life to Him. Simply pray and say, Father, I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my life and save me. I realize, Lord, I can't be good enough to earn your grace and your mercy, that it's a gift from you, Father, but I accept that gift today. Thank you for saving me. Come into my life, Lord, and make something new out of me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Look this way. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. It may be that you just want to go to your mom and, and get a hold of her and, and just love on her right here during the invitation. You may want to bring her to the altar and just pray together. Or maybe you just want to go to her and say, Mom, I love you. Whatever the Lord leads you to do during this time is okay. Do that. Let's sing together. Would you stand? Hymn number 361. Come on, Mom. Come out here and pray with me. Take up thy cross and follow me. I heard my master say, I gave my life to ransom thee. Surrender your all today. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Wherever he leads, I'll go. I'll follow my Christ who loves me so wherever he leads I'll go he drew me closer to his son I sought his will to know in that will I now abide wherever he leads I'll go wherever he leads I'll go wherever he leads I'll go Go. I'll follow my Christ who loves me so.
share just a, a couple of quick things I lost my notes uh, tomorrow night <clears throat> is that them tomorrow night uh, we're going to be day taking down a tree over at Miss Linda Knoll's house at five o'clock so if you want to come help us do that five o'clock's the time you show up uh, and we will uh, there's my notes right there thank you brother Rick so tomorrow night at 5 o'clock, and then the following Monday night, we'll be doing another job, we hope so, at Andorra's house. Uh, so come out and be a part of that. Titus 2, ladies' care baskets are being made. Please bring items next Sunday for that. Okay, the Titus 2, ladies' care baskets are being made. Any other announcements we need to share today? Oh, there is no church service tonight. Um, so you can spend time with your mother. So you go love on her and visit your mom and enjoy her this evening. Um, if you want to come to church, you can. There just won't be anybody. I won't be here. <laughs> uh, anyway, <clears throat> we look forward to Wednesday night service. Come out and be a part of that. And uh, let's close in prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for all you do for us. Go with us and before us, Lord, in all we do. Thank you for these precious little children that were dedicated to the Lord this morning. Thank you for these moms that are in the room today, those that have been honored. And, Father, those that are in the room, Father, that uh, received a gift, Lord, we just thank you for all moms. For upcoming mothers like my daughter Carson, Father, I'm so thankful for her and the little baby boy she's going to bring into the world this October. Lord, we look forward to that. Uh, Father, we love you and we thank you for everything you do for us. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.